All right, so going back to Fallen exercises. So we're on to chapter four, which is point set topology, which is just absolutely essential to analysis, whether it be real analysis or whatever, um, because in analysis, uh, one of the main things that we want to talk about is convergence. And the idea of convergence only makes sense with respect to a particular topology. And so, yeah, topology is really important and it's also really cool and really interesting. So let's do some topology exercises. So we have a set with at least two elements. We want to find a topology which is T0, but not T1. Um, so this is sort of like, if you look at T0 and T1, if you look at the definitions at first, you might think like, oh wait, aren't those saying the same thing? But they're not. And this proof will sort of show why that is. Um, if it's not clear from the definition. So, suppose we have some set X whose cardinality is greater than or equal to two. If I take a set, I usually, I'll use absolute values to denote the size of the X, or size of the set, which is the cardinality of the set. Okay, so fix some Y in X. Let um, e, which is not epsilon, but just some fancy e, be the collection of all singleton sets x such that x is in the set x and x is not equal to y. Um, epsilon, or e, fancy e is not empty because X has at least two elements, so it contains that. So X contains at least one element, which is not Y. Um, so let tau be the topology on X, which is generated by fancy E. Um, so the singleton set X, in particular, is contained in tau for all x in x such that x is not equal to y, but the singleton set containing the point y is not in this topology. All right, um, so given x1 and x2 elements of x such that x1 is not equal to x2, this can be done because x has at least two elements. Yeah, in fact, this this uh, this t zero and t one that doesn't even really make sense if the set doesn't have at least two elements because the condition starts with if x is not equal to y, then blah blah blah, and so those co those conditions are like not even you can't th th those two conditions vacuously hold. Um. So yeah, so given x1 and x2 and x such that these are different, then at least one of x1 and x2 is not y. If say x1 is not equal to y, then this means that x1 the singleton set um, then x1 is contained in the singleton set x1 which is itself an open set of the topology um, but y is not in the singleton set x1 um, thus x is t0 because and well x with respect to this topology is t0 and remember to say that it's t0 it means that if you have two elements x1 and x2 which are not equal then um there contains an open set which contains one of the elements but not the other so in this particular case this this the set containing the singleton element x1 
This singleton set is an open set which contains precisely one of these two elements. In particular, it contains the element x1. This is assuming uh, the case, of course, where x1 is the element which is not y, um, but it doesn't matter. Okay. However, choose some x in x, any x in x, such that x is not equal to y. By proposition 4.4, proposition 4.4 tells us how to get to a topology from the generating set. If you have a generating set uh, fancy E, then the, um, the, the topology consists of arbitrary unions of finite intersections of elements of fancy E. So in for this particular example, tau consists, well, it consists of the empty set, the set X, and um, unions of sets in E. Now it's technically unions of finite intersections of sets in E, but if you take the intersection of any two sets in E, you get the empty set. Well, any two different sets in E, because each set in E is a singleton set. And so if you choose two singleton sets which are not the same set, then they can't have the same, they can't intersect at all, because they contain different elements. Um, but, of course, if you intersect a set with itself, you get itself. So we end up with the unions of sets in E. Um, no set in E contains Y. So the only open set containing y is the open set x, which is the entire space, because the empty set certainly does not contain y because it's empty, and no union of sets in E can contain um, y because none of the sets in E contain y themselves, so you can't union them and get something that's not in any of the things that you're unioning. Okay, so the only open set containing y is x. So there is no open set which contains y but not x. Thus, x is not t1, hence there exists a topology on x, which is t1, no, t0, but not t1. And here we can sort of see the difference. The real difference is that with t0, you don't get to choose which point has the open cover and which set, which point does not. Um, whereas with the t1 set, you, um, you can choose either one and get it. So basically, if we look back at this um, this x1 and x2 in x, we only we, we could only say for sure that the one of x1 and x2, we could only say for sure that the one that that is not y has the open cover, um, which does not contain y. Um, but of course, when we saw um, in the other part, we it, if you choose any x which is not y, then you can't choose an open set containing y which does not contain x. So yeah, that's the difference between a t0 and a t1 set, and this is how you know that there exist sets which are t0 but not t1. And so it makes sense to actually have t1 as a definition, because if T, if t1 and t0 were the same thing, then they wouldn't have separate definitions in this textbook, or there would be like some theorem that they're the same and you'd be able to prove it.
Um, but yeah, but they're not the same because of this, and so we're done.